Years later is a series where I take a look back on the past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode? Star Wars. I've never seen any of the Star Wars movies because I don't care about Star Wars at all. I have no reason to watch them or excuse, but I have years later. I was like, okay, I might as well watch it now, now that it's been 45 years. Since the first one came out in 1977, Episode 4, A New Hope, the only thing I know about Star Wars is Jedi stuff, the Force, Vader being Luke's father, which is so embedded in pop culture that if you're not in the realm of films, then you just already know that's a thing. And then maybe some other stuff, but not like big plot points or anything like that. So there are 11 movies I will be going through it by release date starting with the original trilogy and then the prequel trilogy and then Force Awakens, Rogue One, Last Jedi, Solo and then Rise of Skywalker. That's the way that I'm going to watch these and talk about these. So A New Hope, the very first movie, the one that started this whole franchise created by George Lucas and Luke Skywalker is a he's a very likable character that wants to do something else other than farm stuff and so on his journey he wants to be a Jedi essentially and he meets Obi-Wan Kenobi, a old ass man clearly not in his prime but he knows some shit he knows the force and the jedi stuff and so speaking of those jedi scenes or not jedi but the lightsaber scenes those obviously don't hold up quite as much because back then i don't think there was cg or if there was it was not the best but that's like the only part of the movie that's like eh, okay whatever you know i look past that in terms of vader and obi-wan but it will probably be better throughout the movie obi-wan is like hey luke you're the one you're kind of the one to bring balance into the universe because you just are don't know why but I got a feeling that you are that type of dialogue and kind of mystery and type of story that they're telling. Luke then meets Leia and Han Solo, which Leia doesn't do much in this movie. She gets captured by Vader in the Empire and is mostly a damsel in distress, really. She doesn't do much till the very end where Han, Luke, and Chewbacca, they come and save her. And so the only thing I remembered from Leia is her clapping back at Han, says that she can handle herself, but also like kind of a facade for both of them because eventually, probably, they will probably be together. But as of now, the fighting is more of a facade for the both of them. Han Solo is just out for himself in this movie. He's kind of cool. He has his partner and friend Chewbacca makes noises and whatnot. He just looks cool and big but throughout the movie you kind of get the feeling that he's in it for himself really. He doesn't care about Leia at first or Luke or Obi-Wan or anyone else but him and Chewbacca getting money and going away being scavengers and whatnot and probably throughout this trilogy he'll learn to befriend all of these people. Darth Vader which I think I know the most about because of memes and shirts and whatnot you know he's just that mask is so iconic people outside of star wars that's like oh yeah i know that's you know darth vader and he's more imposing and kind of scary he's not my favorite character but says you know some things and then uses the force to choke some people out obi-wan mentions that he was his pupil for a bit taught him the ways but then he joined the dark side and so when both obi-wan and him eventually meet they have this very it's not most of the shots are held on for like a couple of seconds hell even two seconds and they just cut cut and cut not the best fight but it was still kind of cool and all right and then obi-wan disappears at first I thought wait what this is some like prophecy bullshit and I guess in a way it is after thinking about it Vader swings at him but then he just disappears his cloak and everything is just on there and I'm assuming it's because he sees Luke as a viable favor that will bring balance into the universe and so in a way he's like all right goodbye everyone I'm out Luke is the Skywalker and he'll save everyone or maybe he was like you know what I'm too old for this shit I'm out and fuck everyone maybe that's also another option but I don't think it is and then the Death Star kind of the whole point is kind of getting rid of this Death Star and they do by the end there's like this big ass explosion and i thought that was the end of the movie but they know there's like 20 minutes more i think of like pilot stuff with luke which i thought was kind of unnecessary at first but then in the end it's fine he's using the force in order to win this fight but still felt like tacked on it just felt really kind of prolonged but either way star wars or star wars episode 4 a new hope 45 years later still holds up it's a very simple movie it's not too complicated it's very simple luke is just a boy trying to find anything else other than farm work a Along the way, he meets Obi-Wan, Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, Vader. The universe itself is actually really cool and could be expanded upon. And then, oh yeah, there's that trash compactor scene, which I've seen on Legends of Tomorrow. Damien Dark and Malcolm put Legends and George Lucas himself, a younger version of him, inside that trash compactor. And just one of those things that I know because of pop culture and other shows. But yeah, Star Wars, the first one, still holds up. 
Three years later, 1980, episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back came out and is much better than episode 4. It improved on the world and introduced a bunch of fun characters like Yoda, which was another character and thing that I knew about because of all those funny ass memes and just, it's been everywhere essentially. Like Star Wars for me was just kind of around me, but I didn't care for it. And so there's these like little things and characters and moments and even areas that's like, hey, what do I know this? Probably seen it, but then I just couldn't care enough to, you know, look into it or be interested. And so Yoda is one of those characters that's like, you kind of get what he's doing he taught obi-wan he was one of the jedis and so he's very old now he's jaded tired can't be bothered to do anything really but the ghost of obi-wan is like hey luke go to this green small looking guy because he is a jedi he's the one to teach you all the things you need to know about and most of it's fun like all the scenes are good but also at the same time yoda spoke i couldn't help but just chuckle every now and then and that is completely on me because i've seen way too much memes of him just saying stupid stuff but the character is cool despite all the funny mannerisms and talking and whatnot. Now Jabba the Hutt, I thought he looked like a character from the prequels because he looks awful, he looks disgusting. But no, he's actually a character introduced in the original trilogy and so I don't mind this character. He's fine, you know, I don't love or hate him. It's kind of there. He's in another type of world and setting. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay. Like, why do I need to know you right now? You don't really do much in this movie. You're just kind of there. Palpatine is also introduced in this movie and he seems fun. He seems like a fun character that maybe be controlling everything or telling everyone to do stuff because clearly Vader is in the orders of him but so far from what I've seen I do like him ridiculous but hilarious but also great voice and then the second Death Star which is just another one but bigger the first one was just another Death Star but guess what there's another one and another bigger one fans more on Han and Leia's relationship there's less arguing and more kind of like looking at each other and actually having like a banter talking to each other both of them at first are like what is this this is kind of weird and they're both kind of reluctant but eventually there's the kiss Chewbacca at one point just ruins all that cock blocks it is like hey there's something wrong with the ship but it is fun seeing both of them play off of each other Luke's story in this one is not to be manipulated by the dark side Yoda tells more of how Obi-Wan knew Vader and how Vader betrayed Obi-Wan and the Jedi's because he was being talked to and manipulated by the dark side and so Luke is trying not to be that at all throughout this whole movie Vader at one point is like hey join me join the dark side and obviously Luke is trying to resist it trying to remain pure and then that infamous maybe the most iconic and memorable moment in pop culture and film and cinema Luke I'm your father I knew this going in it was still kind of cool to see I would imagine back in 1980 this was kind of a big thing of like wait what because it's set up in the first one I don't really know my father his farm parents are like well we know your father we know he was a Jedi but we don't want Luke to become that and this is what they meant Vader somehow some way it just is Vader like cuts his own son's hand and Luke is like no 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 it is impossible possible this can't be right instead of joining the dark side he jumps off and is able to land safely somehow later on he meets with leia he gets his own cyborg arm or hand oh yeah han solo also gets not frozen but cement no i don't think cement's the right word but then he gets frozen in time in this wall concrete like cement thing which i also recognize from family guy family guy did like some parodies of star wars and it's peter coming out of that farting and this one obviously it's han solo probably get out of it in the next one so yeah empire expands on the universe by introducing Jabba the Hutt and Palpatine, why Vader's become on the dark side, expands on Luke as to why he is Vader's son and why Yoda taught Obi-Wan and how Obi-Wan knew him, expands on Leia and Han Solo, and just does a lot of things much better than the first one. They just took all of that, expanded on it, made it better. <laughs> Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, the last of the original trilogy, and I think it's my least favorite, and it's the weakest one because the movie opens up the first 35, 37, maybe 40 minutes is with Jabba the Hutt stuff, and again, I don't mind this character, I don't feel like I love or care about this character, nor do I hate him, I just don't care, and so there's a lot of I don't care in the first 30, 40 minutes in this movie. Luke, Leia, Chewbacca, and the others, and oh yeah, I forgot to mention R2-D2 and C-3PO, they're cool, but also don't really care about them i just now noticed that i didn't mention them at all in the first movie they're here and there all of them are at the job of the huts because they want to get han solo out and so he's freed in the very beginning of this movie which you can argue is kind of wasted because he was frozen in the last one and so coming back to be like he's back again it's like oh, okay kind of felt like it was wasted but whatever everyone knew he was coming back either way and then the first set piece is them getting out using the force using the jedi stuff using a lightsaber getting rid of job the hut and his crew getting rid of i think 
Boba Fett? It looks like Boba Fett or maybe Mandalorian. I don't know. I don't know my Star Wars lore, so I could be completely wrong, but he's in that whole getting eaten and whatnot. And so they just kind of get rid of Jabba the Hutt. Don't have any need to see him no more. So there are more revelations to be found out in this episode because Leia is Luke's sister. Somehow, Samoy, they were separated by birth and he just now figures this out. He eventually tells her in a very awkward type of way. I don't know if it's just acting from Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher or maybe the dialogue was just not good and so they just had to work with it but that moment of them talking and it's like the dialogue's kind of awkward and weird but she now knows and she's like oh okay at first she's shocked obviously but she doesn't really tell anyone not even Han Solo until I'm assuming later on as well probably but I don't know if this adds anything I guess it's a cool reveal but I don't know if it does anything aside from oh I guess we have this new thing now I guess it was supposed to be like that moment in Empire where I'm your father Luke but it just doesn't hit as hard because it's more like oh okay cool let's move on like I don't know Luke in the movie is like okay he was being manipulated by the dark side why not try to convince him to join the other side and not be part of the darkness the dark side and so when they eventually meet at first it's like hey dad or Vader please don't be like this they'll be a complete asshole join me in my side you've got Obi-Wan he's like out there he just peaced out Yoda poofed and was like okay all right this battle is essentially kind of a reflection of Empire where Luke cuts off Vader's hand however he doesn't want to kill him because of the influence of the dark side and Palpatine just there laughing his ass off sitting there being evil as fuck saying like yes please join the dark side be my next can be my next emperor or whatever but he doesn't do that he's able to resist and not kill his own father and then Palpatine's like okay I guess I gotta bring out my Raiden MK lightning powers from the heavens or whatever and this obviously changes Vader he turns because he wants to save his own son at first he wanted him to join he was like okay goodbye and now this confrontation and fight he does still have some good inside of him Vader like kicks him or something I think he just gets him off of Luke and throws him in this big ass hole and Palpatine dies and then once him and Luke get off Luke tells him to take off his mask and Vader looks disgusting he's been burned purple ass skin not purple but kind of like white not completely white skin but ugly and disgusting and so this is a really emotional and good payoff from the first movie him not knowing who his father is he wants to look for them wants to become a Jedi friends out his father's an evil emperor and is Vader and this one is able to change him and say goodbye to him and so it was a really good payoff for Luke and his story being the one said by Obi-Wan Yoda and now Anakin because by the end he sees the ghost of all three of them standing there being like yes you are the one to bring balance to the whole universe meanwhile you have Han and Leia with the Ewoks I think that's how you say it, Ewoks they're there like I don't know kind of like with Jabba the Hutt stuff this part of the movie but like okay what are we doing here okay all right I don't mind this but all right whatever it at least has a purpose of having like a battle there so that's good it's not like you know Jabba the Hutt is just kind of there Ewoks in the forest and trees that's there to have them there but then also have a big battle there as well alongside with Luke Palpatine and Vader stuff and then yeah I think that's it for episode 6 and the first trilogy the original trilogy it's good it still holds up things like CGI stuff like this movie has that riding motorcycle part where it's in the forest and trees and the CG background doesn't look that great but whatever I can look past that and then most of the lightsabers they're fine I think the one in Empire is a lot better because there are shots where it's held for much longer than three or five seconds but the original trilogy and star wars so far it's been good this isn't very very bad now onto the prequel trilogy, starting with episode one, The Phantom Menace. I believe all of these are written and directed by Lucas himself, and it is not looking so good right now. This first one's all right. Hopefully it gets better. And so before watching these, the big thing I heard was that these are one of the worst movies ever or the worst part about Star Wars. And this one is just very boring. Like the whole movie is about finding the one to bring balance from Obi-Wan and Liam Neeson's character. And so they find a young Anakin, right? And everyone knows that he's gonna be Vader. And so the journey of him being being this little ass boy, being the one, being this really cool pilot. Hopefully the journey is, you know, interesting and awesome, right? And so far it is not that the whole movie is finding him and then bringing him into the Jedi stuff or Jedi HQ and council. And I feel like that should not have been the whole movie. I feel like that should have been the first 20, 30 minutes and then whatever else George Lucas has planned. The whole movie should not have been about that. And because of that, the whole movie felt like a goddamn drag and, you know, kind of boring to watch. Seeing Liam Neeson as a Jedi was both cool and weird at the same time because 
because I grew up watching him as kind of the old badass action guy, like his Taken movies. And I guess nowadays where he just does like action movies. And so seeing him with the lightsaber alongside with Obi-Wan with the really weird looking wig. Like, okay, this is weird. Well, okay, cool. Same thing for Samuel L. Jackson. Throughout this whole movie, I was totally expecting him to say motherfucker, but he didn't, which obviously would not make any sense in this universe. But it was also be like, hey, this is Samuel L. Jackson. Let him say that. But yeah, you know, both of them specifically was like, hmm, okay. Liam, in the end, does get killed by Darth Maul, who is another, like, partner and person under Palpatine. He has, like, a red face. He does look cool, though. Like, he looks actually cool, but as a character, I don't care about him because I don't think the movie does enough. He's in it throughout, sporadically throughout, and then the last act is him there with the dual swords. It was amazing. And so the fight with him, Obi-Wan, and Liam, that was actually pretty cool. But then also getting killed right afterwards as well. I wish they would have kept him, but I guess everyone knows that Anakin's gonna to become Vader and so it's like why kill him off he looked cool he had a cool you know lightsaber dual type saber but as a character I think it failed because there wasn't enough screen time to be like hey care about this character I care about Darth Maul a lot of it was like the race with Anakin could have done without that don't really care about that just know that Anakin would be the one okay I get it let's move on and it keeps going back to him and his village whatever and so because of his death Obi-Wan is now responsible or feels responsible to teach Anakin the ways of the Jedi and be the one to bring balance into the universe which they were completely dead wrong but that's not his role with the next movie and in this trilogy and then seeing him turn probably the jedis themselves are cool like this whole like there being a bunch of jedis because i believe in the first one or second one they said that most of the jedis are gone they're extinct except for vader right and so seeing them being a thing was cool hopefully it pays off them being gone being wiped out from vader or maybe the empire was like let's get rid of all of them because they're good and we're evil i don't know but it's cool seeing them cool seeing yoda back because you know it's yoda and natalie portman is also in this movie as a character that's there i guess like i don't know she's like a part of this princess i think she's meant to be like the queen or princess or something like that but she's kind of there she meets anakin seeing them meet was cool seeing her meet with obi-wan and all that stuff all that was cool but then kind of like with leia in the first one they kind of do nothing with her in the first episode so hopefully she does something interesting or cool and then oh i guess anakin young anakin he's fine you know seeing him being pure innocent it's cool but then everyone knows watching this movie probably back in 1999 was like how is he gonna be vader how is he gonna be evil and how is he gonna join the dark side those are still looming in the background and so the phantom menace eh you know whatever it's not as bad i mean there are some bad parts and bad cg but overall the movie's fine it's okay it's not bad yet you gonna use one of your jedi mind tricks on me episode 2 attack of the clones i can 100 for certainty say that this is a bad movie this is not good god damn so far this is the worst one i don't know if george lucas was smoking crack who's doing cocaine snorting that shit maybe he should stop being a writer because the dialogue in this movie is just not good the worst part about this movie is anakin and natalie portman all their shit and their scenes it does nothing to the plot of this movie it feels like fucking filler why are we doing this so anakin's grown up he's going to be a fine man and so to Natalie Portman he's still kind of a child because she met him as a child and so it becomes weird and awkward when he's like I want to be with her it's like bye he sounds like a horny teenager and he kind of is he's kind of arrogant disobeys all of the Jedi stuff even Obi-Wan and Natalie Portman's like no Anakin you're still that little boy that I saw way back 10 years ago or something like that but then that changes throughout the movie and they actually go with it and it's like what this is kind of weird and dumb and bad if you see my little boy why are you kissing him later on and why are they going on this date technically like what is going on this is not good all of that stuff i felt like i was watching fan fiction from george lucas maybe he was horny at the time or something but you know it's not good anakin at first comes off as hella creepy like he wants to really be with her at any means necessary that type of look it's like wait a minute this is getting kind of creepy and it's like is this going where i think it is luckily it doesn't but where it goes is stupid it's dumb like i thought natalie portman's character was going to be more interesting more better but she's just kind of relevant relegated to Anakin's girlfriend and Anakin himself his journey of becoming Vader so far up to this point has been a bit disappointing and kind of lackluster because in this movie he's kind of a childish selfish creepy ass kid young adult the only person and character in this movie progressing the plots is Obi-Wan himself there's a bunch of androids that are being cloned for some reason whether it's the emperor or who else it probably is the emperor and so he goes to this big place all the clones and whatnot all that's interesting but it is bogged down by a 
a date with Natalie Portman and Anakin and then cutting back to sometimes with Obi-Wan and going back and forth back and forth and then Anakin doesn't listen it's like okay is this how he becomes Vader or like he's just arrogance thought it would be something else something more interesting other than he's a horny boy and a bit creepy a good chunk of this movie felt like filler felt it just stretched out even more than the first one it felt like it was just stretching out the runtime to two hours because that's how it was back in the day or something or back in the original trilogy so it's gotta be two hours 10 minutes two hours 20 minutes clearly i did not enjoy this movie is there anything else oh there's that old guy that has a red lightsaber old man who has like the red lightsaber for some reason don't know why i think he cuts off anakin's hand i think he fights both him and obi-wan i don't know what else to say about episode two it's bad like i can't believe it's as bad as this i guess if there's one positive maybe it's not but one thing i noticed is that it is setting up the seeds for anakin to become more believable as vader because episode one is just him as a kid now he's like 18 19 i guess and now he's becoming you know kind of like okay why is he like this and setting up the seeds kind of despises the jedi stuff in their rules while also looking on the other side of being like you know what maybe i'm on the wrong side you know but this movie episode two attack of the clones is not a good movie that's the situation and then ending it with episode three revenge of the what is it revenge of the sith i guess slightly better than episode two but still okay it's not good so many people said that this is like a really bad trilogy and it is not the best it's not good so i guess you get to see like a pre palpatine like a human palpatine because he's the one that's manipulating anakin throughout the whole movie talking to him anakin's the one supposed to spy on him but then anakin is really reluctant because maybe he thinks he's on the wrong side of like the rules and whatnot he's become more arrogance more kind of rebellious and so i guess that's cool seeing like a human form of palpatine and then seeing the one that causes it is samuel l jackson he's the one that's like having energy or something and turns him to this old wrinkly ass skin that's why he looks like that in the original and so that part of it's cool i had also forgotten that luke and leah needed to be born and so in this movie natalie portman's character again is kind of like there she's pregnant and then eventually gives birth to both leah and luke and so once again she does nothing in the movie and so that's kind of disappointing you had her there and you did kind of nothing with her essentially okay i guess have her be seduced by creepy ass anakin and be pregnant by the end of the trilogy and so the majority of this like the first half ish maybe a bit more is boring kind of like the first one but then the final act where we get to see obi-wan and anakin fight all of that was pretty damn cool leading up to it it's like how anakin becomes vader natalie portman kind of there obi-wan's going around doing stuff i guess that's one good thing about this trilogy are the fights some of it's actually pretty damn good and then at the very end where obi-wan's like you're supposed to be the chosen one that part hit it was good just again leading up to that it's just not executed right at all really could have been better you know set up and leading up to it but that's how you know anakin gets his scars and whatnot he's burned up palpatine's there puts him in the vader costume and mask and it's like okay this is all right it's kind of dumb but whatever everyone knew he was gonna become vader getting to that journey of anakin becoming vader was so not interesting at all and was so kind of like okay whatever and then at the end obi one is the one to bring leia to somewhere else and then loot to that desert and that's it i guess in the very beginning when anakin kills that old guy with the lightsaber and so he's like conflicted which is good like all of that stuff was good him being conflicted disobeying the orders or the ways of the jedi everything else around it till the very end is very boring it's like goddamn, why does it feel like filler why is this not good also why does the movies despite being released in 1999 2002 and 2005 somehow look worse than the original trilogy even though technology was better like cg wasn't as good nowadays than back in the late 90s and early 2000s but still it looks so kind of ugly compared to the og that's it for the prequel trilogy it wasn't as bad as people say it was but it was still bad especially episode two that one should not exist at all it's not good this part was kind of rough to get through hopefully the five movies now that i have left to talk about hopefully it's better you've never heard of the millennium fall now on to episode 7 the force awakens which i can say for sure it is a lot better than episodes 1 3 and especially 2 this is the disney slash jj abrams was like directing and finding shit out i think but i do like all the characters that are introduced ray is so far kind of an unknown she's been probably by herself for a very long time parents are somewhere by herself we'll probably find out who she is by the end of this trilogy and then along her journey she meets poe finn circle android slash 
slash R2D2 copycats. And this is kind of a film about different people coming together. Ben is a stormtrooper and he wants to rebel because he does not want to be a part of the new order. So it is an interesting take and story about a stormtrooper being conflicted, wanting out, he gets out, and then along the way he meets Poe, who is played by Oscar Isaac, who is now Moon Knight, but he doesn't do much in this movie. He's at the beginning and then at the end, and he's a pilot, and that's kind of it really. I don't really know much about him now. So it's like, okay, where is he going? He's not there for a long time. Let's see what they do with them later on. So all of these three different people, they meet each other and they eventually by the end, they're like, okay, let's team up, I guess. Kylo Ren, who is sadly kind of like a Vader 2.0. He has Vader's like helmet or head in some box or whatever, being like, I will not disappoint you. And so it's like, okay, is that it? Cool mask, cool get up, all black, not entirely original, but okay, sure. It's a safe bet. And his lightsaber is also red, but has like a cross at the end of it. And so that looks cool as well. But he's, I guess, there to be menacing, but not as menacing as Vader because again, it's like kind of a repeat. He's kind of wanting to be Vader, which makes sense because it turns out he is the son of Han Solo, which he is in this movie as well. And Chewbacca, both seeing them. And I thought because he was, you know, a fan favorite or just kind of an older character and cast, they would have him there for like, you know, 20 minutes max. And then that's it. Safe bet. People were going to come because Han Solo's in the movie, right? But no, he actually has a very significant role in the movie in which he dies because this whole time he wants to save his son from the dark side, just like Luke had with Vader. And so while I like this, this is kind of a repeat. And Ren is obviously conflicted as well because it's his father, but he felt betrayed and he was trained under by Luke who is missing at the very beginning, the whole text intro thing. It says that Luke has disappeared. He is gone. He's somewhere in the abyss, somewhere else. And so that part when Kylo kills his own father to cement that he is truly on the dark side, I like that. It's kind of retreading the whole like Luke and Vader stuff. But in this case, Kylo Ren actually does kill his own father. He has her tied up trying to talk to her about this android robot thing. He wants it because Snoke, I think is his name, Snoke or Snook or whatever. It's a weird name. Wants Kylo Ren to get this and then it end off the movie somehow through some way by using the force Ray is able to find Luke you see a old Mark Hamill there with his android arm and the hood and everything he looks cool and that's how episode 7 ends so it's good so far I do like this movie quite a bit I'm interested in seeing where they take new characters like Ray, who's clearly a Jedi why Finn is the way he is why was he even a part of the Stormtroopers we need more Poe because he's in it for not very long Han Solo dying which I can see why like if you grew up watching the original and you watched this and seen him die pretty sure you can get a very extreme and passionate emotion out of you but didn't mind it and then Kylo Ren is fine so far he's kind of Vader 2.0 the movie has not made me care about him just yet but so far it's good your foul stench when I was brought on board Rogue One was boring as hell. I did not enjoy watching this movie. It's just set like before episode four. And so this whole movie kind of feels like filler. It kind of feels like I don't care about the characters. This main girl, Jen, I think is her name, Jen or something. Either way, I cannot care less about her name, but she has a backstory about her father was a part of the troops or whatever. And then he went, her mom died. She wants revenge. Finds out her father isn't as evil. Father dies in the middle of the movie. Along the way, she meets Ronnie Yen, his friend with the big ass flamethrower shit. What else? A boyfriend I guess. Aside from Ronnie Yen and his scenes, I didn't care about any of the characters at all because by the end all of them died and so kind of felt nothing really. And then as a bonus I guess they have Vader show up in the corridor doing his lightsaber stuff pretty cool but that's also like right before episode 4 during the whole Death Star exploding or after episode 4 it's either after or before. Either way this whole movie was kind of useless. Didn't care about the characters. It seems like the movie didn't care because all of them died so we don't need to know them because they're dead what was the plot? I forgot about the plot. Is it preventing or destroying a Death Star? I forgot. Doesn't matter. Princess Leia CG. Kind of rough to watch because it looks uncanny. It looks like, okay, this is off. It's Princess Leia, but it's a little off. The skin is like a bit too white. It's fine. You know, it was weird. But as a spinoff movie, it was all right. Like I initially thought if this was a spinoff, they're going to do other things outside from the main storylines from Vader and Luke and all that stuff. But apparently not. They just keep going back to the same thing because the universe is all about them because if they do have an expanded universe there's probably a lot more out there to explore and talk about and tell stories about that's kind of my main issue right now two movies in not looking so good for the actual story and mythos and universe but it's not bad 
episode 8, The Last Jedi. Now, I remember being on the internet back in December of 2017 until Solo came out, which is May. And so between that time frame, there was a lot of anger, rage, toxicity, rage again, arguing, fighting, discussions about this movie. And I just remember being like, damn, all right. It seems like this movie have split the fan base, have enraged them. And then, you know, me being me, I just ignored it. Did not really care about it. So watching it now, five years later, um, it's interesting. We'll divide fans, but, you know, giving death threats and doing all that to actors and whatnot was, you know, a bit much. Probably shouldn't do that. It's not their fault. It's, you know, screenwriting, the writers, people planning things out. They didn't plan it out that well. And then, oh yeah, I guess they blame Brian Johnson who directed his movie. And it seems like he didn't care about keeping the mythos in check or, you know, the plans. He was like, okay, I'm gonna do whatever I want. Yeah, good. And some of it's not that bad. Some of it's fine. But then some of it's like, okay, that's an odd decision. And I don't know if it's his fault or Kathleen Kennedy or Disney or J.J. Abrams. I don't know. But there's a lot of pointy fingers and blaming at one of these four. The whole Finn and Rose stuff, I did not care about. I guess it tied back into the main plot. But by the end, I did not care about it. Rose is fine. For Finn, I guess we got some things about him as to why he ran away. And that's kind of the whole point about him in this movie where he keeps wanting to run away and not face the consequences of leaving. I like that part. The part I didn't like is just going to the casino or something. Like that part finding the mole and i don't know i did not care every time i come back to post stuff i just did not care i checked out almost immediately because it felt like it was just kind of there to prolong some things and i just did not care poe does a lot more in this movie but again i don't find it interesting there's like a new lead in the group or whatever because leia is taken out she's in a coma and this new chain in command i think it's played by the girl from jurassic park forgot her name but she's in it doesn't like very impulsive he got people killed every time we come back to him he's like hey can i do this this, this that i don't like you i want to be impulsive it's fine you know i'm glad that he got more screen time but the amount of time that's spent about this didn't really care about it i do like kylo ren a lot more in this movie he's more fleshed out as to why he wants to be on the dark side because he feels neglected by luke very later on we find out as to why but then snoke has also given him a hard time as well and so he's conflicted because of what happened with luke he came to the dark side but being here doesn't make him happy at all and so he's like okay what do i do and throughout the movie he's like hey Ray join me you have the force for some reason you do let us join forces and get rid of the good side and the dark side create our own empire or whatever being conflicted what to do i do like that and then the connection between him and ray that i don't know i guess was weird i don't know if that was for tension sexual tension or something i don't know they can like see and talk to each other through the force and that's how we find out in flashbacks what happened with him and luke it's weird but also don't mind it it's a way for both characters to talk to each other without ran finding out where luke is and vice versa and then snoke is useless because i thought we we're gonna get more of him and we do but by the end kylo just kills him because he's like screw you essentially it's like okay so like him being in the first movie was kind of useless and this movie wants kylo to fight and kill ray and okay so that's useless and then luke most of the scenes with ray and him just being him was really good i really liked it I was a bit worried that mark hamill couldn't do it because it's been so long he's been in only i think voice roles and so seeing him him becoming Luke again was pretty damn cool and the amount that he's in was shocking I thought he was gonna be in it for a little bit kind of like Han Solo did but then the issue comes when it is revealed in flashbacks that Luke saw the darkness and Ren while training him and whatnot and so he's like okay you know what I'm gonna kill him and I don't know if I like that because I feel like Luke shouldn't have done that like it's not Luke at all I feel by the end of the original trilogy he was a bring balance and he did for a while he did bring balance and so Han and Leia had a kid it was kylo taught him his ways but then changed his mind midway when he was sleeping because he saw the darkness and anger and chaos and instead of talking about it or i don't know doing something else jumped the gun made a conclusion i was like and i gotta kill him it's like i don't know if luke would have done that throughout the years like after episode six bringing balance for a while and then not being able to like help kylo because it's too dark isn't really luke it was weird hence kylo ren feels so neglected as to why he felt betrayed and he joined the dark side and whatnot and then i I guess luke dies by having a projection of himself facing luke and then when that ends he comes out and dies i think and that's a big i think that was last jedi do we get ray progression as to why she knows the force and whatever she just trains under luke uses a lightsaber i don't know that's it by the end though this movie isn't awful i guess the luke stuff i'm not a huge fan but that part is like what okay movie is not like horribly made that big ass red room that looked really good but yeah i don't know i guess in the end it was all right. 
Solo, a Star Wars movie, which you know what? I'm shocked to find that I really like this movie. Okay, maybe not really, but it's actually pretty good. It has nothing to do with the Force and Jedi stuff. I feel like Star Wars would be better if they expanded more about the underbelly and just other things in the universe, aside from Luke, Leia, Vader, and all that stuff. This is a story about a young Han Solo. The feel and tone of it doesn't have the Forces and the Jedi stuff. It is how Han Solo became, I guess Han Solo, become well-known, how he met Chewbacca, how he got the Millennium Falcon, his first girl who's played by the Game of Thrones girl, the dragon girl, don't know her name, but she's good in it as well, kind of as a love interest. There also seems to be a lot more actors that I know. You got the Game of Thrones girl, you have young Han being played by that one kid in Supernatural in episode 2, the Wendigo episode, that's where I know him. You got Woody Harrison, I do like him. Paul Bettany, he's the villain quote unquote, I guess he is, but kind of British guy Paul Bettany, he's with the Game of Thrones girl, which is an issue to both her and Han and then they even have Donald Glover as Lando so it seems like in these spinoffs they're like you know let's get well-known actors that won't affect the overall story of the main episodes but let's have fun and this movie was fun that train sequence water bubble part that was pretty cool all of the scenes in the underbelly meeting Lando for the first time meeting Chewbacca all of that stuff was fun but then the actual story I think is fine because he's trying to get to his girl kind of but then kind of like Rogue One and Force Awakens along the journey he meets Chewbacca Lando Woody Harrison and all that stuff how they're scavengers and how they're hired to you know get an item and make money for it and all that stuff that's all interesting those are moments but the actual like through line story is kind of whatever all these really good moments with him except for the end where turns out Game of Thrones girl was working for Darth Maul all right where is this going probably nowhere because there's no other movies maybe he'll show up in Mando or Visions haven't seen those but that was a cool little reveal that she was working under and for Darth Maul and it ties into Palpatine. I'm not sure if she returns or not, but what am I in seeing her? But Solos was good mainly because there's no Jedi and the Force stuff at all whatsoever. It was his own self-contained story about how Han Solo became Han Solo and met his friend Chewbacca. Great disturbance in the Force. Finally, the final movie, Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. This movie is a messy ass mess, but fun movie as well because J.J. Abrams is back and he's trying to essentially set up a lot of things quickly and then trying to finish them off very quickly as well because The Last Jedi didn't set up the whole Palpatine stuff. Apparently, according to everyone in this movie, Palpatine was behind it all. Apparently, he didn't die last time we see him in Episode 6. He was alive, which is, you know, bullshit because there's clearly no plans. Ren meeting Palpatine in the very beginning of the movie should have either been in the last movie. It felt like a wait a minute we just now see you again. Shouldn't you have been set up way earlier or even in the middle movie but no he's here. We gotta finish this real quick. Kylo is continuously doing the same thing in this movie saying join me Ray. Instead of not killing Palpatine join me not the dark side but my side. He done that last movie and so doing it here felt repetitive and then turns out Ray is actually a Palpatine. She's the granddaughter of Palpatine. Which, sure, again, they have to set this up hella quickly in this movie because she's using the force whenever Kylo comes in to attack and then for some odd reason, lightning comes out. Why wasn't this mentioned or set up previously? How come? Like, okay, sure. And like I said earlier, Palpatine being behind all of this. Like, how did Kylo Ren set up his empire and the First Order? How is that all set up? I don't know how or when he get the money. I have no idea. I like Palpatine, but setting up this thing was hella messy. But the movie kept going at a very relatively fast pace and so something was happening, something cool was happening and fun and so the movie wasn't boring it was just really really messy trying to tie all these loose ends and not be complex and complicated and convoluted and that stuff and then kind of like with the original trilogy Rey is able to talk no jutsu or just will herself and being like no join me Kylo and he does fights back against Palpatine and all that stuff and then he dies do they kiss I think they do I guess they're setting that up sure whatever and so Kylo Ren dies being somewhat of a good guy leading up to that journey was like really messy just kind of this whole trilogy I found it's like recycling stuff from the original trilogy. Kylo Ren dying and the arms of Ren. That's kind of like Vader and Luke. Rey kind of being like Luke of not knowing who she is. Go out there be something else. Kylo Ren being essentially Vader and then doubling down on that being like he looks up to his own grandfather and all that stuff. Why even make these movies if there is no plan and recycle just same stories? But there is that moment with Han and Kylo. Really nice. I did not expect that. Him to come back, see his father and then go away. And then does Palpatine die? I think he does. I'm gonna assume that 
that Ray kills him or he dies so that he doesn't come back. And then by the end, Ray becomes the new and improved Skywalker. And that's how the movie ends. And then, oh yeah, I forgot. All the other characters, whatever they do, I forgot about. Didn't really care. I don't hate them. I don't hate Rose, Poe, or Finn. Poe and especially Finn, they were interesting in the first movie. The journey of them through all these movies were just a complete mess. And so by the end, couldn't really care for them. But they were fine. They were doing something. Flying in space. Killing people. I don't know. But yeah, that was, as of right now, the very last Star Wars movie. All right, I guess. The movie's messy. It's fun. But it's also like, god damn, this was not planned out. Things are happening hella quickly. But then these are fun as well. And so Rise of Skywalker was just all right. And that was it for Star Wars 45 years later. I had fun going through all of these. Well, hold on. Maybe not, you know, episode two and that trilogy. But I finally got to watch all the Star Wars movies. Not including like that animated one and the Christmas special. Not those. I'm not going to include those. It's a very up and down franchise. It's not entirely bad. But I still have fun going through these. Still not a huge Star Wars fan. I'm not going to go out of my way to get merch and whatnot. The only thing I'm going to watch after this is probably Mandalorian. Because it looks like a cool spin on on the western genre and then Star Wars Visions because it's anime but aside from that I don't love Star Wars I still don't really care about it but I like it sure so that is it for me this has been The Road So Far and thank you for watching